I'm Barbara Applegate. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm putting the finishing touches on a large 30 by 40 seascape. We're looking at a painting that's almost complete, but I need those finishing details. The overall view is good. A lot of distance, a lot of action, birds, waves, the sense of a crashing, crashing storm, but the light is still not there. So let's move into the waves on the left hand side and bring some of that beautiful light right in to the wave action. Take your time, place your lights, draw them on with a paintbrush loaded with paint. You're designing a path for the eye to travel. Right from the edge of the painting all the way in to the wave area. Here I'm smoothing off the edges that are too rough. It's always great to have some brush strokes, but you never want those brush strokes to take over the subject matter. So once you've laid your paint in, go right back into it and smooth out probably 95% of the brush strokes. Here, more highlights. This is a foreground wave, so there's going to be more definition here, more action, more color, more light, all happening in this foreground wave. Now we're going to go back to the big picture. We're going to start putting some more birds in. Take your time with this. Don't hurry. You need the anatomy of the bird to work. We'll continue to add birds, a few here and there, as we need them. More birds in and now we've got to go to the base of that crashing wave and bring some of that beautiful golden light in underneath. This gives the sense that the wave has depth and movement. Don't be afraid to add some strong color at this point and then blend it into your wet paint, blending those edges away that you don't want. We're back to the bigger picture again. Analyzing what needs to be done, we need to work into the foreground, bring some light in there. So here we are in the foreground. It's just a matter of, of brightening it, lightening it, and warming up the entire area. When you're on the beach, you see the water rushing in, little rivulets, what rushes right over the beach and we're going to put that beach color in now by warming up that blue underpainting. I'm using yellow ochre, cadmium red, a little bit of cadmium yellow, a little touch of white. Now we get to the fun part. Taking little bits of light this is the edge of the rippling water as it comes in. This is a very big element because you're designing where the edge of the water is coming and where it is moving your eye so that we bring the eye right back into the subject matter. It's a wonderful way to break up a static beach. all these beautiful lights and they're all leading us right up into those rocks and right up into the birds where we want to go. Take your time. This is a mixture of white cadmium yellow and just a hint of yellow ochre.
breaking up that beach area. Now we're really leading the eye right into the center of the painting with these strokes. Plus the added benefit that it's lightening up the foreground. Design with your brush. Load your brush with paint and then use it. Think before you put that brush down. Know where you want the paint to go. Back to the left side of the painting. I want to bring my horizon line slightly forward. It's been lost into the background, into that fog bank, foggy cloud bank, really. So I added just a touch of warmth there, the same warmth I used earlier in the waves. It's going to be a little permanent rose, cadmium yellow and white. Then you just, just add small touches. And now go in again. You realize you can brighten it even more. Make sure it disappears behind the wave. And suddenly you have a whole nother dimension behind that wave. The distance is there that wasn't there before. Now let's go one more time into the wave on the right hand side. I want to create one more layer of depth here. So I'm going to break up that big solid area by putting a little bit of a crashing wave in front. What this does is it makes for very distinct areas. We have our single seagull in the very foreground. We have our two smaller seagulls flying into the wave. Now as we create this wave, with lights and fresh color, our other sea wit gulls are going to disappear into the background, giving us one more layer of depth. After all, that's what we're after. We're after three-dimensional depth in two-dimensional format. Use lots of color here. Spend some time shaping this area. It's very important that the shapes are coherent, that they read waves. Now let's get some really warm, warm lights in there. Once again, back to my favorite white, permanent rose, and cadmium yellow. Soften edges where you need to. But this is where you keep some of your hard edges. Soften everything and it's just a mist. You want to have those wonderful planes where the light is catching the spray. It's so easy to lose these, so be careful when you're smoothing. Barely touching the canvas. Oh, there goes the finger again. Barely touching the canvas with the paint. Just enough to leave a little piece of paint. Something to work with. And now we're going to form the other side of the wave. Softening. And now down into the bottom of the wave. Because we've added more detail, we now have to add more color to the bottom of the wave where the surface hitting the sandy beach. 
flying off the rocks. Let's take another look and go back to the full painting. Look at how that light has made such a difference in the foreground, brought us right into the painting. Thanks so much for visiting my studio.